finally, at 333, at least here in the UK, it's 333. And uh, <laughs> we are going live. Catherine and I have just been both talking about how weird time seems to be at the moment. Do you find time weird? I would love to know. Is it? <laughs> particularly at the moment. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Catherine will be with us in a moment. She is just doing a little last minute tech thing. Hello, Kathy, good to see you here. We are going live with you today to actually help you with your intuition. So Catherine and I are both intuitive specialists. We met at David Lacopo's uh, Light and Love Tarot Reading Festival where we spoke at the conference. Uh, she is from the lovely land of Canada and she's written a book called A Little Bit of Your Intuition and Catherine reached out to me a few days ago and said hey I'd love to interview you for my YouTube and for my radio station and uh, we were like hmm what on because we both really connect with the tarot in terms of the hero's journey within it but also we really connect with intuition, you know, and that subject because obviously she's written a book called A Little Bit of Intuition. And so we were like, okay, how about we do something where we also go live on Facebook with you guys so you get a chance to have a double take on any questions that you have about your intuition. So we're going to go live in a minute uh together and we're going to talk a little bit about our journey with intuition so it's time to just chill have a cup of tea you know tune in and uh literally tune in that's what intuition means and then after that we will do a little special on your questions so anything you've ever wanted to ask or get a special opinion on you get the chance to have two today one of us will answer first and then We'll be like, uh oh, uh, or ding, because we have with our voices, because we haven't had time to get the uh, the sounds up on our phones. And uh, we will add whether we agree or disagree and what we have to say about it. So we're going to give you twice as much value today. Okay. Ah, uh, Catherine's uh, still having problems with this live on my page. Bless. Okay, so um, I'm going to bring Catherine on anyway, and uh, she's copied it to her page. So if any of you know us both, uh, anything that you could share <laughs> on Catherine's page would be awesome. Okay, and we're just going to have to leave it up to the divine and the universe because it's time to go live. Mm -hmm. Here she is. Hello, Catherine. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm okay. Like I said, I just can't believe the time. And you said that it's very behaving very strangely at the yeah. moment. Yes. Yeah, I definitely. When I'm mes messaging you that you're often awake at times that I would have thought you would be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, everybody else I know is wide awake at three in the morning too. Like a number of people are like, I, I can't sleep. I'm, wi I'm wired, I'm wide awake, and it's crazy. It's the middle of the night. Yeah, I wonder if it's the same on in the UK. It would be interesting to know, like, if we've got, like, Canadians watching and UK people watching, if it's the same um, yeah. or if it's, like, an across-the-pond thing. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know that, too, because, you know, as I mentioned to you earlier, too, like, even my cats are acting weird. And uh, they're always a good gauge of of the energy, right? When they start acting, shifting their patterns. So, yeah. yeah. Really tuned I mean, in. Everything, everything's looking different, feeling very different, don't you find? Do you find even the color, the color of the sky is different? Mm, it must be all the planes being in lockdown. My mum said the other day, I've got a juicy card that I'm going to pull for you in a minute. Okay. But, um, uh, and it would be good for other people to answer as well. But I just wanted to say that my mum said to me the other day that she was in her kitchen and she heard this sound and she was like, what the heck is that? And then she realised it was a plane. And it was just that she hadn't heard yeah. so long. <laughs> wow. Where, where, where did she live? 
Where is she that she heard a plane? I'm surprised she, there's any planes at all. She lives in Winchester, well, Allsford. Okay. Um, you know parts of this this land. I know you've traveled. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. You were doing some series with your travels in this uh, part of the land. When I met you uh, around the time of the tarot conference we spoke at in Montreal, and you were getting your book published then, weren't yeah. you, as well? Yeah. Yeah, everybody, everybody told me to go see uh, where you live, actually. It was the one place oh. that I could have stayed. Everybody said, yeah. you have to see Bath, you have to see Bath. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I, I didn't leave enough time to, to go do it. But, um, mm. Mm. yeah. Uh, well, good. there's people watching now that I know actually want to live in Bath as well. And uh, it's ruled by Sulis Minerva which is the, uh, Sulis is the Celtic goddess of wisdom. And when the Romans landed to build the baths from the hot springs, yeah. they um, they really wanted to tap in, but honor Sulis. So they were very respectful yeah. and uh, yeah. they made a Sulis Minerva. Minerva is the Roman equivalent, which is justice in the tarot basically. So, yeah. uh, it's a very interesting energy. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, I was on, when I was on my way, I was taking the trains and buses. I was in Weymouth at the time, and I was making my way up to Glastonbury. Okay. And this elderly lady was in the bus stop chatting with me, and halfway through the bus ride, she taps me on the shoulder and she says, this is the road the Romans conquered Bath on. I was like... <laughs> it just gave me shivers, you know, like to be part of just connected to all this history, you know, because in North America, you you just sort of like you read about it or it's in the most it's in our literature because we read English literature. It's in our mythology, our movies. It connects you back to England. But unless you go yourself, it's like it sort of stays removed, like some sort of mythol mm -hmm. mythological thing, mm -hmm. and like to actually be there. And it's it's real. It's just, I don't know, it was, very, it was very cool. So I definitely want to go back and visit you across the pond one day. Vice versa. I loved the energy in Canada. My take in Canada was, yeah, my take in Canada is that it's very hot energy, which is interesting because they say Glastonbury, yeah. which is down the road from Bath, yeah. is the heart center of the world. But um, it doesn't feel that way to me. It, it really feels like when I was in Canada, like I had the most amazing, it was like I was meeting angels on a daily basis and I'm not really, yeah. angel isn't a vocabulary of mine, I'm not really that yeah. way in mind. So it was like, oh my God, I really felt the power of the archetypes of uh, Mary and uh, Mary the strongest. Mm -hmm. and, um, it was really, really, like she appeared to me on the first day and did really? this heart activation. Yeah. Oh, it was really wow. beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. It's interesting to get each other's takes on the, each other's lands, but I yeah, love it. it is. Yeah, because yeah. I didn't I didn't know about the um the ley lines until I I was landed on two of them uh without mm -hmm. really trying. I didn't know about the I'm still trying to figure like study it a little bit because it seems mysterious and ancient you know the ley lines but i mean when i wasn't aware of it and twice i ended up at places that were on the ley lines for archangel michael when when yeah. i've been calling to archangel michael for okay. 15 years in my work and i end up at his chapel or his you know or the, or the tour or or the uh, saint michael's mount and then saint michael's what, mount. The ley lines. Yeah. and it was yeah. cool because there were other people on the on the at the mount who were also into this who just happened to be of course yeah gravitated towards each other and by the end this guide was taking us around specially to show us and i literally felt it i, I felt myself stepping over or into something and i felt myself in another another time zone another it was ethereal it was amazing like you can see in my pictures i'm just like glowing and elevated at these these places i literally felt a force field and I don't know, like the ley lines, I, I still haven't studied it enough to know, is that what it is? Because it seems from reading these old books that it's really just 
going to the top of a hill and cutting a straight line between point A and point B, but I felt something bigger than that. So I'm so, I'd be so curious to go back and, and visit other places that are on these sacred lines and see what you feel. Do you know I used to live a stone's throw from St. Michael's Mount? Really? Yeah. <laughs> so really? Where were you in Pennsylvania? Yeah. My my line, and I actually used to travel along the Michael Ley line, which is really? the, the strongest one um, in the UK. Um, so the one I travel across, no. it goes from you know, it goes through St. Michael's Mount. It actually crosses with the Mary Ley, Ley line. Yeah. St. Michael's Mount, yeah. interestingly enough, we were just talking about Mary. Um, yeah. And then the Michael Ley line actually follows pretty much, it's a little bit higher, but it pretty much follows the train line from Penzance to London, which is like oh, one wow. the other. And that was where I wrote my first book, The Transformational Truth of Tarot, because I was, I was actually doing that commute every single week wow <laughs> um it's you like were in, you were living in penzance yes well mausel mausel yeah yeah, yeah. yeah um, I remember that. but i have That's never so actually cool. done the tour of saint michael's mount but i did arrange a paying it forward um earth meditation healing there um and it was online and everything i i did a whole like audio for the world and um i can get that to you actually it's called the rainbow journey and i sometimes dish it out for free and the reason why was because there was a lot coming through about the rainbow bridge which is yeah. part of the a line that goes around to Uluru in australia and um how cornwall was like the heart pump and it had got blocked Full of um, souls from the Second World War, and it wasn't passing over very well, and it needed a bit of unclogging or helping. It's all in my second book, actually, The Transformational Truth of You. So, um, okay, I've got to read this then. This is another funny connection we didn't know we had, and here we are, you know. Yes, absolutely. People are saying, oh, interesting topic and synchronicity, which is fantastic. Yeah. And love for us to just know a little bit more about you know, the intuition and, because it seems like there is, as you say, some synchronistic connection. Well, I wouldn't have picked you if I didn't feel something calling me <laughs> towards you. I, follow, I followed my intuition to even ask you, you know, because we, we met sort of twice, but we never really had a chance to sit down and talk. And, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, I just always felt compelled to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. So. Well, you know, I, 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 my retreat in Cornwall that I do has the Michael Ley line underneath it, and people that go there, they feel it. The supernatural energy is strong. I've lived in a lot of places around the south of England, and mm -hmm. uh, I would say that Cornwall is definitely, definitely one of the most, if not the most, uh, powerful. Oh yeah, places I've lived in terms of supernatural energy. It could be quite funky um at times so i'm not surprised we had such a such a strong connection there um yeah. i'm looking through these these cards and they're just not gelling with the questions it's like things like would you rather have bad breath or gas i don't want to ask you that i want to yeah. <laughs> i want to my, ask gra my grandfather was born in cornwall and um I finally pressed my mother, you know, like, where is he from? Oh, Cornwall. I'm like, it's big, mom. Where? And so she finally dug up where he was from, and it was this little parish called uh, St. Agnes. Yes. And yes. so I did a little bit. Then she just mailed me, you know, this huge family tree going back two or 300 years in this little place. And it was just so amazing to stand there, you know, and say and know that your ancestors were there mm. and just you know just all of the the memories that we carry our cellular memory even if something didn't happen to us but like the coast and the the landscape it's like i feel like i was imprinted with it even though it was my first time going like it was almost exactly what i'd paint as my ideal little place to live mm. this coastal you know hilly kind of 
villagey place and and even just stuff about you know the mining because there was a a lot mm -hmm. of tin mine obviously and uh you know just like claustrophobia that runs through this grandfather and that family wow. and it turns out other other people in the family who aren't even necessarily talking that much we've all been watching this show pole dark yeah pole dark, <laughs> yeah. Pole dark, you know? <laughs> but i found out that it was partly shot in this little place where we're all from and i'm like yeah. oh my god i'm getting shivers all of us are watching this and we didn't know this i am now as you're saying and it. so it was super mm -hmm. powerful to go to cornwall because you know the ancestry but yeah the energy for sure like i mean i london's beautiful don't get me wrong but i knew like i wanted to just bounce through london and i wanted to get out into the i i, mm -hmm. I saw the jurassic coast and then cornwall and, and glastonbury and i was so happy i did it sounds like there's a sense of homecoming that you're oh, yeah. and, and everything is actually celtic they are actually from that land so yeah. that makes a lot of sense in terms of the connections as well so it sounds like has it been in your family intuition would you say are you one of many well no. nobody nobody um uh, seems to listen or respect it but it's there like it was considered mm -hmm. craziness mm -hmm. right so we were it's unfortunate but we're taught to suppress right suppress and deny and yeah. i just couldn't so i was the rebel and i thought back and i mouthed off and whatever i did you know but i didn't I, I didn't let that be extinguished but my mom is quite intuitive but she doesn't perceive herself as being intuitive or or honor it but she is and i'm sure some of the rest of the family is too but they just weren't taught to to use it as an empowering mm -hmm. thing it was like a keep it on the shush you know or like uh i don't know so <laughs> what about for you yeah well uh, yeah kind of the same although yeah. it was really mixed because mm -hmm. i remember my gran telling me when i was about six or seven about dowsing about oh, okay cool oh leaving you on a silver cord and like if that broke you were in trouble about past lives and how somebody looked in my pram and said oh she's an old one um so all of these like i think i was seven when i had my palm read my mum had someone come round and do a reading for her and they okay, read my cool. palm told me i was gonna meet a tall dark handsome stranger <laughs> <laughs> you know um and <laughs> i just always wanted to be a psychic and i was incredibly psychic as a child um in fact all the way till 36 really mm -hmm. and then um but like you it was kind of hushed a lot at the same time so it was really confusing yeah. like if you said to anyone oh grand told me this they'd be like oh surely you mean granddad now, both my gran and my granddad were in the Masons. My gran still is. Um, so was my granddad. Okay, interesting. There you go. Uh, yeah, and that kept coming up over the years because I worked at a pagan store, Celtic pagany kind of place in Montreal, and they were all obsessed with you know role playing games and all of this stuff. And all they kept talking about was the Masons or the Knights Templar and all this. And I'm like, my God, these. And then I found out, yeah, halfway through, I, I was telling my mom, yeah, these these people I work with, they're just obsessed with this stuff. And she's like, well, your grandpa was a Mason. Excuse me, why did nobody mention this? You know, and I've, I still find it a mystery. It's mm. hard to know because he was born like late 1800s. I have no idea whether he would have been just part of the social side of it or whether he would have been initiated into any of the esoteric mm. side of it. But um, yeah, another mm -hmm. parallel there. Well, I don't know if there is just a social side to it, is there, if you actually get yeah. into it. If you actually get into it, I think you have to go through your initiatory levels, don't you? I don't think that. Well, um, I mean, I, I, ironically, I've met some other people who, who are, who, who were, one of them was, he's younger, but he was running a, he was in charge of a lodge. So pretty mm -hmm. 
He said, no, not every, not everybody's going to be initiated into the, uh, uh, okay. the mystical side. I mean, there, there's mm -hmm. the rites and rituals to all of it. Yeah. But it depends to what degree. Like, mm -hmm. And it, I don't know if we'll ever know. You, you know, we're, even when I was in uh, Truro, because um, some family mm -hmm. was in Truro, there's yeah. a Masonic temple. And I, th I was inquiring, and I just got all of this, like, no, 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 he doesn't work here. <laughs> no, no, come back and talk to so-and-so. He would, oh, no, no, he's not. I mean, I got that evasive thing mm -hmm. when I was just inquiring about somebody who's been gone for like 50 years. So, yeah. Um, do you get that too? Um. Well, I've been to a Masonic tem temple. Um, yeah. I've been in one and uh, with the Masons. And uh, I have, I used to work in Drury Lane in London, which is, oh. um, you know, right smack bang in front of the Masonic, the Grand Lodge, which actually my, my gran was a big part of. Um, and that whole road has Masonic shops along it. I don't know if you've ever been along it. Um, I'm not quite sure where that that is. is that Drury Lane is Covent Garden area of, of London. But uh, yeah, I get you. I think the general energy about intuition, which I'm sure all of us actually will probably resonate with, is that there is, it's a little bit of a tease, isn't it? <laughs> it's kind of here, it's not here, da 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 da. Um, so well, it I might be hard coming up, coming out. Did you have to like come out at any point to your family? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I started studying uh, astrology at the shopping mall at the bookstore. <laughs> you know, we would separate and go shopping. And I remember like seeing stuff about because I'm a cancer and I, I was like, oh, my gosh, what is this? And I'm, I'm reading it as if it's like nobody catch me. Right. What am I? Reading? And I kept going back and studying it. And uh, I studied it without anybody in the family knowing for at least maybe seven or eight years. And um, then I moved to Montreal. I met a, I met a guy, he had tarot cards and I started to read the cards. And I don't think I really came out till maybe around 24 years old. So I had already been doing it almost 10 years. Wow. Um, that's okay. how much stigma there was. For sure. That they could have mm -hmm. just decided I was, you know, uh, some psychiatric case or something. Like there yeah. was always that that fear that they would put you, uh, yeah, that was very mm -hmm. real. I don't know. I think that I think that's generational as well. We don't have most of these things are now ma more mainstream. We're talking about them as if they're not so mysterious or powerful or scary. Um, but you know, I grew up in the seventies, eighties. Yeah, it was still pretty taboo to say you did this. So even the store I worked at. Um, all of us had to sort of come out of the closet and work at a store and be out in public. And we had people coming in there trying to save our souls, you know, oh, and yeah, know. The rosary in front of the doorway mm -hmm. and all this stuff calling us. Yeah. So, I mean, just mm -hmm. by the fact that we were saying I've studied this and I'm, I'm out and I'm at a store um, that just drove a, a whole community right there. And then it was, internet that just dissolved it all and the community just dissolved as well or it's more in, like everywhere mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm. but it was yeah it was still scary coming out and saying yeah yeah i'm it's sure like, yeah. i'm sure a lot of people here have had that um so you know i think it would be good to open it up and ask people if they've got any I'll answer your question, but just um, ask them if they've got any questions. We've got a lot of comments coming through, so it would probably be good to run through them as sure. well. Yeah. Um, I can't yeah. see them, by the way, because if I go to the live, then we're going to get a double sound. Uh, no worries. I'll, I will okay. put them up. And we will <laughs> okay. See them. Okay. Cool. In a minute. But, uh, yeah, just to answer your question, for me, not so much um for me it was like i was so in that like it was my normal world even though so like uh you know i was brought up in a house that was haunted and uh, um it's in the family home for for you know like a couple of decades a couple of generations and um 
I just oh it was crazy like non-stop but whenever I would say something uh that it would be a figment of my imagination right so it, it still had that suppression um and uh it was only when we left and that people would actually start telling me <laughs> that it wasn't um so <laughs> it wasn't a figment of my imagination at all so this was just like my daily life I was um an only child I couldn't really communicate with the world I was living in another world completely right. and so that was my reference point or my way of being and so that was normal to me and so I went into the world like that and as I grew up, I got rude awakening after rude awakening about how the world wasn't that way inclined. Like my talk yeah. in Montreal, I started to try and get back in the closet. I was like, oh, God, I'm actually out of the closet. I need to get in it, <laughs> <laughs> which was painful. Um, so but, you know, it, it was a bit of the reverse. And I had to work through all of that and come properly out again. It's been a, it's been an amazing journey. Yeah. But I just want to bring some of our lovely live viewers um, in, especially if they've got questions. If you've got questions about your intuition, peeps, uh, mm -hmm. now's the time to like put them to us because you know you've got Catherine here who's been professional for how long now? Because you said 25, 25 years or more. Yeah, around that. Okay. And you've been doing it for 10 years on top of that because you just said you it took you 10 years to... Oh, no, the 10 years was from 15 years old to like 25, and then 25 I sort of came out of the closet and started working. Yeah. I'm 50 now, so yeah. So yeah, that's 35 years of experience in... Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, and you've got your book as well and your radio station. What's your radio station called? Hey! hey look at that isn't it gorgeous a little bit of intuition I love it it looks so beautiful I love the silver yeah I know I love the colors they, they did such a cute job and it's just such a cute little book and uh yeah the radio show is called the river rain show and it's uh 8 p.m eastern time on Mondays for a couple hours I mix I mix interviews and themes and I mix music too so it's like you chill and I give you things to think about and then I play some music you know, Sounds and then perfect. I play some more music. Okay. Which it would be, wouldn't it? Well, 1 a.m. in the morning, you know. <laughs> yeah, you guys are late, I know. Yeah. Yeah, but would, if, you, if you, it's about chilling, it's kind of a good time for us here in the UK. So uh, they can find details out of all of this on where's the best place to find details out about you, Catherine? Yeah, my web, my website is river rain.com. That's the best mm -hmm. place. Or on okay. Facebook. On Facebook, you are? Uh, Clairvoyant Medium, Catherine Allen. Fantastic. And I've also put links in the post to, to your book. Okay. And, uh, and a 10-day course that I'm starting on Monday. Uh, it's about doing your, you know, learning about your intuition because it's not always the way that you think it is. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, the biggest, that's the biggest piece that's hard to teach. Indeed. Because people have to experience it and it's always feels weird or awkward at first, you know, or it's counter to logic and then people get all messed up, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So just um, looking through here, we've got lots of lovely comments. Sure. Uh, Karina Rocker is here and uh, is, is saying some lovely things to you and blessing us both. Mm -hmm. um, there's someone saying Mausol is a gem of a place and mm -hmm. that you have vibrant energy, but it's just coming up as Facebook user because on StreamYard, if people don't register, then it doesn't show your name, peeps, which is good if you uh -huh. want to be anonymous. At least you've got that choice. Okay. Um, Janet is saying something about the lines. So let's just talk about the ley lines a little bit. Yeah, sure. Okay. Some of the lines are energetic. Janet lives in Cornwall, by the way, by oh. Michael's Mount. <laughs> some of the lines are energetic, some not. Some are concurrent with the ley lines, some aren't. The Apollo and Athena lines, yep, also dissect at St. Michael's Mount. Yeah. Absolutely. 
And Athena, again, is Minerva, like, <laughs> so that it's funny how they all, it's mind blowing. You should go to Carmel, Boel, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I don't know that one. Khan must mean some kind of stone, as some kind of like bronze. Is that the one in, is that the one in Ireland? Because I heard it starts in Ireland and it goes all the way to Israel, the St. Michael line. And the St. Michael line, yeah, it goes through a, a lot of, um, countries and forms part of the rainbow bridge which goes right the way around to australia but i don't know where con les Boel is and i'm not sure i'm saying it right but maybe janet will let us know and as she says here she swims in front of saint michael's mountain it's singing oh that's amazing wow okay I, I just i was just amazed how wonderful i felt and i felt the mary line as well when i walked across it and and then I could just tell, you know, the room, the room at the top of the chapel, it's even like light blue. And you can oh, wow. feel like Mary. the quality of the light streaming through Mary's line in this light blue room. Mm. Just it's incredible. Mary. It isn't. Yeah. You know, I've never been there. It's like I've gone to the Mount, but not actually in, you know, when you live somewhere for years. Yeah, I you know. Can do it any day. <laughs> That yeah, was yeah, we do it in Montreal too, and then tourists know more about it than we do because we're like, meh. Yeah. I couldn't stop going to Notre Dame, and the Aura show there was just, I think I did it three times in one week. It was just mind blowing. So I totally get what you mean. You wouldn't do that normally, I don't think, if you lived there three times in one no, week. No, no. <laughs> I'm curious, do you know, or maybe your, your guest knows of, um, of any books that describe where these lines continue because obviously they've been mapped very well in the UK or in Europe, but they haven't been really mapped out here and they must continue. There must be places in North America that his line crosses as well, but we don't know. There is but one. In Australia as well. Like. There's one that was really highly recommended and I think it's got the, the word serpent in the title, which maybe cuts it down by a few million. But, uh, yeah, I can't remember the rest of the title. Uh, okay. So I'll have a look because it might still be in my on my bookshelf. I'll have a okay. little look for you. Okay. So um, someone's saying they've missed the beginning of the live. So not sure who Catherine is. Well, hopefully, you know, a little bit more now and what the topic of the live is. Mm -hmm. The topic of the live is um, your intuition. It's all about intuition. So what is it you need to know about your intuition? How can we help you um, feel like, oh, yeah, I've figured that thing out about my intuition that's been confusing me as Catherine was saying it's like when you're trying to work it out what this thing called intuition is uh, this is your time this is your time to ask us we're going to go over to questions now and uh, you can get a double take you can get my take and Catherine's take Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll agree and maybe we won't. <laughs> so, uh, you know, do ask away. I'm just going through your comments now. So Karina says, same as me, Tiffany. I was five years old. Yeah, such a potent time. I did, do you find that? Like my, it was four or five for me when I first really got smacked with how strong the psychic energies were for me um really weird things happen like you were just saying about genealogy actually Catherine yeah um and how you know inherited memory I actually painted a picture when I was five that won an art competition uh yeah. not my art competition it was my mum's when she was the same age she painted the same picture and it oh, won wow. competition. you were channeling her um, picture mm -hmm. yeah yeah see, i don't i don't ever remember a time that i didn't see through people mm -hmm. i don't remember like going mm -hmm. through an awakening like oh i suddenly see and everyone's different i just sort of feel like i arrived here and i saw things or saw through people and my, my experience was and i know a lot of people you feel actually very lonely uh with it because people don't validate it you know if you go up and and they they want to deny no no I'm fine I'm not sad well yes you are well they're not going to go yeah you're right I'm really sad I should have said so <laughs> like mm. kind of so you just feel like why am I always seeing things that I know are true and nobody wants to say are true and mm. so 
you sort of split, you know, like I think some people that split becomes like a mental health problem and other people can handle it. This, this duality of like, there's what people say and then there's what I know is true. And how do I walk through the world with that? I think we have to do that all, all our lives in some way, you know, there's, and negotiating this duality, <laughs> it's really like the stressful side of things with, uh, with negotiating relationships or intimacy sometimes, right? Totally. Um, there's so many points you've touched on there. So the, the first thing, like I'm always saying to my students in the Transformational Truth of Tarot, is don't be attached to feedback from, you know, don't, yes. the minute you start reading to from the reference point of the person in front of you rather than the universe yes. um, up here, yeah. then you're no longer helping that person um, expand to a whole new perspective or, you know, the universal perspective. You've, your ego's got in the way because it's hooked to people pleasing. Yeah. And so yeah. you've yeah. touched on that level there. Then you've touched on another level, which is... Um, I don't have it. I don't have it with me, but it's number four, I think, in of the ten symptoms of altruism, which I'm doing now, which is the problem of making assumptions when you're intuitive. So there can be a problem I've found mm -hmm. of going, mm -hmm. I'm intuitive, so I know, yes, and then it's like your whole reality distorts because if you are intuitive. You are picking up on other people's stuff. And how do yes. you know that it's your reality or not? Yes. Oof. So yes. That, you know, that's another whole um, journey to kind of walk through and navigate. Yeah, I, have a, I have a couple of chapters in my, in my book about that. How do you know the difference between intuition and fear, intuition mm -hmm. and fantasy, and intuition and projection? Great. Those are very good yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's the hardest part, you know, because um, to separate yourself from your own desire or fear, and know that what you're picking up is is actually purely being picked up um, intuitively and not not colored by you, takes an enormous amount of mindfulness, you know. So that's why I sort of love. Uh, you know, developing intuition leads you to being more mindful or healing yourself. Mm. Oh, for sure. You can't yeah. trust you can't trust yourself, your inner, your that that voice um, until you know that you're centered. And so, there's a lot in the way. Mm. <laughs> you know, even, even if we are intuitive, we're still constantly asked to keep keep healing ourselves to stay clear, as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the challenging thing because, to be honest, in my journey um, of intuition as intuitives, we transgress boundaries. It's the nature, you know, in a way we have problems with boundaries because yeah. we just, you know, we're picking up stuff all the time. If we had boundaries, we wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. And so actually... For me, I was maybe abused by the fact that I had no boundaries and that's why I was picking up on so much all the time. Yeah. And that's why yeah. I say I was really psychic. I do this because I'm not too in tune with the word psychic, but I, I was picking up on all lots of different things that were causing havoc in my life until I was 36. Mm. What happened when I was 36 was I, I started on the self-love path and all of the chaos and all of the drama, well, it kind of um, came to a head and then, mm -hmm. and then stopped. And so what you're saying about the healing in terms of like the intuition, how do you know when it's a fear or, or not a fear? I actually just wrote something on my Facebook page today saying, but, um, for instance, once upon a time, I had an intuition that someone was going to stamp on my foot. And instead of moving out the way, I dithered. I was like, is this intuition or fear? Whack, they were on my foot. Another time, 
uh, another time I actually wanted to slow down to get the message so I'm, uh, of something and I actually rushed it was like I don't have time I'm not listening da, 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 da. so on some occasions we need to speed up to get the intuition and on some occasions it seems like we need to slow down to get the intuition but actually no that the bottom line is if I was coming from a place of self-worth and not concerned about whether it was intuition or fear, but just with the question of what would self-worth do, I would have moved out of the way. Or on the other one where I needed to slow down, I'd be like 4.5 million pounds better off than I am now. So, you know, it's like the two, I think, are so entwined and I don't think yeah. it matters how intuitive you are if you don't have your self-esteem you won't make the right decision no um, no it's true yeah yeah because i find like the like you said the more the more you get good at it you can sort of be living outside yourself always you know tapped into everyone else and forgetting you sure and then yeah. life will always come around, like and like you said, someone will step on your foot, or something, <laughs> you know, something will happen to to wake you up that you are a person, a sovereign person with a body who, and you've got to take care of yourself, you know. And yeah. and a lot of people, the more you the more you tap into, whether it's intuition or you're tapping into other people's pain all the time, you can get lost in this trap of helping people, Absolutely. and you, you you think that you're nobly helping everyone, but you're I've had to learn an awful lot of lessons about helping, what that really is and isn't, you know, and uh, they were not easy lessons. And I, and I think a lot of empathic people have similar lessons because we end up with, you know, toxic people, addiction, narcissists. And it's like, well, it's an, ex you know, they're at an extreme and so are we in some way. And a lot of, a lot of, a lot of healing to come back to the self-love, self-worth. Um, yeah 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 so it's a huge topic isn't it it's not even yes. just intuition it's it's as you say it's about you know the self-healing and getting to know thyself which is where you know the tarot passion i know that you see it in the same way as i do on the hero's journey and yeah. how it's a mirror to actually get to know your soul evolution and purpose and your and yourself which yeah. ties in really well with um this lovely person, I don't know your name, it's come up as Facebook user who says, would love to know if there's anything else I can do to assist me on my life path and purpose and mission. So um, is there anything that you, it's hard for us to know what anything else means, I think, because we don't know yeah. what this person sort of, um, what comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that you would suggest that would help this person to get to know themselves or what their purpose and mission is? Yeah. Well, I would say often the thing that you um, that is your purpose or mission is a pattern that keeps coming up, something you keep being called to do, and you might you might keep running from it too. Like mm. sometimes we have a we think that if we find our mission, we're just going to be 100% gung ho and have energy every day. But a lot of people, when they tap into their mission, they're actually like, oh God, you know, and, and they sort of run or they're afraid of it or they sabotage it. Mm -hmm. So it, you have to look at what theme keeps coming up, where they, where, where do people keep, where does life keep asking me to step up? Um, or what, what topics, what themes, what interests, what things get you mad? You know, what things do you think need to make, to change? And, and a lot of the time you can be trying so hard and putting out like, you know, 15 different threads and and desperately trying to find one and life will come along and pick you and say, we want you to do this, you know? Um, so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a complex question because it, it's not like you're just gonna wake up one day and go, by the way, your life purpose is, uh, you know, and, <laughs> <laughs> oh great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Check. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a complex thing to, to soul search and find. Yeah. What do you, what do you tell people when they ask you these, these um, questions? Well, I, I think Carl Jung says it perfectly. There's a quote of Carl Jung that says, um, 
you know that your your purpose is lies in what you love to do as a child so I will ask people what they liked to do as a child yeah. what do you like to do as a child oh me um I liked to uh to dance and sing and and oh, sew yes. uh, the other day yeah so yeah, in, uh, Oh yeah, and I, I would have I I, pers I tried to pursue the arts um, in various ways. Obviously, it's not an easy path to uh, you know to pursue making an income, but I I was pretty tenacious about about parts of it for a while. I worked in film and theater, doing costumes for a few years, and I sang at an Italian wedding orchestra for a few years, um, and I did my ballroom dancing and all that stuff and. Now I, you know, the spiritual I'm sort of happy. called me and took over all of that stuff. And I didn't realize that maybe that was the deeper thread. So I, I've been trying to find a balance between this my spiritual path and my creative path. Um, mm. And it's nice because now yeah. there, there's more room or there's more confidence. So I'm, the creative life's coming back much more. Yeah, what about you? Yeah, I mean, it was the arts. So, Me too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the only things that I really passed at school were drama, art, English. Mm -hmm. um, and if you read The Artist Way, I don't know if you've heard of The yeah. Artist Way. Yeah, then you can yeah. see when I read that book, I thought, oh my God, that's actually the transformational oh. truth of tarot. That's what the work that we do in the transformational truth of tarot is about, which makes sense what why some people start writing or they pick up a pencil and start drawing after their teacher told them when they were seven that they couldn't draw you know they pick that up again for the first time um they've got a lady here i don't know um kathy um she i don't know whether she's here or not but she'll vouch for that um about writing has been a block for a long time but it's now just she can't get enough of it it's yeah. and she's also asked what cards I'm using so Kathy if you're still here I don't know if you are but maybe you'll see it on the replay it's best self icebreaker um but they're just a little bit not quite the right topic um so <laughs> for, a, for a Facebook live but maybe good for friends um even if it's like a Skype online lockdown party um, yeah. Kathleen was saying, how do you know intuition or if it's just the voice in your head? But I think um, we've kind of gone through that question already. And you were saying you've got some chapters on that in your book as well, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, but yes, I, was, I would say really the question should be, what would self-worth do rather than is this in my head or is it my intuition is just like cut through that completely and just be like, what would self-worth do? And, yeah. And I don't put you on track. Yeah, I do agree. You... I often, you know, if I get stuck for myself, you know, and I, and even though I'm intuitive, I might, I might be just whatever, something's being triggered for me and I'm finding it hard to listen to my own inner voice on my own problems. Um, I'll often defer to that and say, what would somebody with high self-respect and high self-love do in this situation? Perfect. You know what would yeah. you what would you tell your best friend to do in relation to said thing, mm -hmm. and because we usually intuitively know what a um, self valuing action would be, it's just that when you think it applies to you, oh, but I'm not worth it, or I'm whatever, whatever track is going on, or I mm -hmm. can't. Do that. Mm -hmm. But if if you call yourself to act on what you intuitively know would be the self loving thing to do, then you can bring yourself into you know, into the right energy to solve your life, solve your problem. Is that, that's how you, yeah, I think. Totally, it. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Totally agree with you. That would be ding, 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 if I had yeah. like the, <laughs> yeah, the sound effects. Ah. Janet is saying that it's in Cornwall, Con Les Boel, or however you say it. Near a very special place called Nan -E Nan Giselle. There's another one I can't say. I'm in Cornwall. Yeah. I mean, they do have funny places, funny, funny 
yeah places has an arch in the rocks always gone after there gone there after a major trauma or loss and it heals wow oh, wow and it's so pronounced it well. <laughs> okay. um, yeah well afterwards yes janet is also saying good books for the ley lines and then she's right i really recognize that name of hamish miller so look up hamish miller okay we've got another yeah, question. whenever i asked people what books to start with because some of the the crazy intuitive synchronicity that happened while i was traveling was the lady that i stayed with at this airbnb in glastonbury turns out to be this major Wiccan priestess lady who's written all these books and she like we used to carry her books in our store and I'm like oh my lord and I'm staying at your house and I didn't even know. <laughs> love it and so I asked her because she's just a wealth of knowledge and I said I asked her about the ley lines and she was very sort of you know professorial with me and said well I think you should go back to the beginning and read the first book which would be this Alan Watts I think no Alan Watts, yeah, I've heard of Alan Watts. And Maybe. Quite a big name uh, yeah, don't that. quote me on that, but it's like, it's going back mm. to like 1910 or something, this book that's written on ley lines. Mm. And, and I've tried to start reading it, but it, it's so dry. It's like yeah. it's written in that voice of a hundred yeah. years ago and you're like, yeah. oh. And so I've been, I, I think I need to access it through a different point. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, these ones are probably the same as as Janet is saying. Um, doesn't think they're all in print now. You know, this is okay. the thing because uh, it yeah, is. That's, yeah, it's awesome too. We have another question here. Again, discerning the difference between intuition, higher self, soul, and spirit. What would you say on that front? Okay. Hmm. That's a complex question too. Oh, yeah, they always are, aren't they? I know because well, because intuition can function on on a let's say a, a primal animalistic level, you know, a gut feeling, a sudden emotion, a sudden sensation that you can read and go, okay, I, I my my stomach's tight, I'm not comfortable here. Let's get out. Does that extend to a spirit is telling me? you should get out of this place like clear audience, mm. you know, or the presentation mm. of a spirit where you feel like, no, I saw an apparition of my grandma and she said, get the hell out of here. Mm. It's different. Like, so it's in layers of, ex of, of experience to know it starts with being in tune with your, with yourself and listening to those visceral sensations, but then it can extend all the way to, you know, mediumship and gui guides around you. Your higher self is a hard concept to say too, because is that voice that you're hearing of self-love your higher self, or is it, if you really tuned into it, is this a spirit, an angel, an ancestor, something from another dimension telling you this, or is it actually your higher self? We don't quite know, do we, right? Like even me, I mean, sometimes I know that it's external, something, whatever I'm tapping into, it's speaking to or through, Higher self tends to feel like it's my own voice in my own head saying, you're doing fine or whatever it is, you know, and, and higher self's not going to speak to you in some negative voice or bully your bossy kind of voice. And neither is intuition or, or mm. a positive spirit. Mm. Anything that's going, you know, negative voice or, or speaking quickly or telling you, directing you to do stuff. I find is usually not the higher self or higher energy of anything. Um, it's usually very simple. My own spirit guide will just sit there and go, or it will be like, <laughs> uh, or like next, like it doesn't go, you know what, next time on Tuesday at three, you should really, no, it doesn't do that. Uh, when it's, a, when it's your inner guidance, it doesn't do that minutia. I find that's a pattern I've noticed over time between people who are struggling with hearing voices or, you know, they might be channeling something, but it disturbs their, it disturbs their inner peace or it doesn't help their life. That tends to be what's going on. Mm. And, and the people I've met who channel where it does enhance or guide or soothe or calm you, it's always something simple and, and positive. 
I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> it feels like a very good way of putting it. Um, yeah, totally. And again, I think it comes down to that bottom line again about how where is your vibration at? Are you coming from that place of self-love and self-esteem? Because as you say, um, when you are, you're going to be naturally in contact with your higher self. And it's when things are negative or telling you what to do or things like that, that you may be in contact with the lower kind of vibration exactly. in the universe. Exactly. So that's the only thing to really be concerned about, I think, in terms of like whether it's from your intuition, higher self, soul or spirit, any of those, if they're on the higher vibration, which they will be yeah. if we're talking like um, higher self, for instance, uh, then, you know, that is very much, I've forgotten what I was saying, but I think basically you get it. It's, it's very much about to do with your vibration again, really, isn't it? And what you're yeah. vibrating. And if you're listening to the negative things, and that doesn't mean like let's sugarcoat and live in the land of la la bubble. Yeah. It means let's look after ourselves. And part of that is knowing our reality and keeping our feet flat on the floor. And that's quite a lot of the work I'm going to be doing with the group from Monday for 10 days. Yeah. So um, the link is in there if anybody is interested in that. Uh, I think somebody's read your book here because they're saying great chapter. So uh, I think they're, they're a Facebook user, so I don't know who it is. Um, oh, Facebook users are coming from my page because they're not registered. And no worries. They can always put their name if they want to or they can be anonymous if they want yeah. that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Janet's saying seeing, saying that she feels quite strong with her intuition. I think Kathleen's done a very vulnerable share here, mm -hmm. where she says that she was sent away at thirteen to live with oh. her aunt in Ireland. Oh wow! She was psychic, and she was put on Valium, and she oh. got oversensitive, and no one got her. Yeah, and she felt very judged by this. Oh. Yeah. And that's exactly why people will suppress it, isn't it? Because of that very thing yeah. um, happening. Yeah. I was I was very lucky in that um, I was kind of like, I think I got close to being put in a mental hospital when I was 16, but mm -hmm. my mum managed to keep me out of it. And I feel now looking back that that would have taken me down a, a, a very different oh my God, path. Yes. Yeah. And it's almost as if I've been protected of not going down that way so that I can, uh, you know, help others that have been labelled like this. Like we've had, I've had people with bipolar and, mm -hmm. and lots of things that have been told that their, you know, um, synchronicity is, is a sign of them going into a manic period, which it may well be. Like if we look at the high priestess in the tarot, she's pretty bipolar, right? you know in that sense but it's just it's another label isn't it and it's yeah. like actually if we just turn our attention to being self-love yeah. you know that 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 can heal all of the, all of this stuff because all of that stuff is from fear isn't it people fearing that bless Kathleen that she was crazy yeah you know? I um, had one guy come to me um years ago I was teaching into intuition psychic development and he he was uh, the brother of one of our staff at this uh, pagan store, and he was paranoid schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. And at the time, he was doing better in his life because he was getting a monthly injection, and he was a little more stable, and he wanted to take my class, and I was nervous because I, I didn't know enough about the illness, and I didn't want any random intuitive thought could be an intrusive or repetitive or triggering thing for him, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I talked to him and he said he felt ready to try and be there. So we did. It was very interesting. Be, uh, and he was very self-aware, uh, which was great. He's written books about his illness and talked about it. And so he was maybe a, an exception because he was able to get a bit of distance about his himself. Mm -hmm. But it was so interesting because when something was intuitive, 
both of us felt an aliveness to it. And when something was self-generated, it, mm. from him or from, it, it had a deadness. It had yeah, a, it makes a lot of things. And, and we were, and he was able to discern, we were both able to wow. discern the difference that this vibration was when it was yeah. right. And so he was able to understand sometimes he was intuitive and other times it was self-generated. It's both. Fantastic. I know it was wow. really incredible. That's yeah. amazing work right there. That is going to be so valuable for him. Absolutely. So and I, give, uh, I give guided meditations all the time, you know, um, mm. before I bring people in to the, to the work. And it was just a basic relaxation and, and light around you and everything, nothing more than that. And his sister came to me a few months later and said, I don't know what you did, but he's like listening to these guided meditations and he's, he's going downtown now. And he's like, like he's higher functioning than he was. So like he gave people a, a bit, a, a piece of like confidence in their perception, just changed their life, you know? Yeah. yeah I, beautiful. I'd love wow. to do more of this, but it's a slippery slope, but I'd love to do more work like that because I had a number of people over the years come and say, well, I'm on medication and my doctor says it's in my head, but I know not all of it's in my head. So I want you to help me figure out which is which. I was like, but when you could validate to them when something was was them and when they were picking up, because if, if they're told everything, just slam it shut. No, you're crazy. Uh, you know, just the hor horrible disempowerment. Mm -hmm. How are they supposed to get out of that? Somebody has to say, no, I see it too. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they can start to discern and emerge. You know? mm -hmm. that, yes. I mean, that that is what happens very much on the transformational truth of, of tarot as well. And it sounds like um, I, I actually had a shop in London that was two oh, minutes yeah. walk away from the largest uh, psychiatric hospital. And oh, my, my client said to me, first client for tarot, said to me, I want to know where my head is. And oh, I said, oh, wow. oh, you mean your emotional or mental or spiritual oh, head? And they said, no, my physical head. Like it's been removed in surgery and given to Cher. And Cher gave it to Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson ran yeah. off with it. And right. I want to know where it is. Right. And I was like, yep. And that's and I was like, okay, yeah. I think um would you like some healing instead? Luckily they said yes, please. Okay, um, but I think you've really hit the nail on the head there, particularly with the white light, in terms of I've never found anything so simple but so powerful in all my life. And I found it at that time in my life because boy did I need it. I was in that shop on my own mm -hmm. and we actually had walkie talkies by the end of it like the whole shop oh, wow. all of yeah it was it was a dangerous place to be and okay. um, yeah, I can understand yeah and especially having like that because you know it just attracts you know and okay, so yeah. the white light was something that was massive for, for me then it was whenever yeah. I visualized it and whenever it kind of touch someone it would there would be an instant healing and it yes. would just oh my god yes, so it's yes. Like simple things which are the most powerful isn't it really yeah love, oh mm. yeah so much and 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 that's part of how archangel michael came into my life too was as i started to work more with the light he appeared to me why well, i didn't even know what this was, mm -hmm. you know, was literally at I was at midnight mass Christmas concert here in downtown Montreal. And I literally saw, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, and my friend who knew more about and studied more about angels um, and could see, you know, this dark energy and light, she was already working on that more than me. Uh, and um, when she pointed it out, um, I was like, wow, okay, this is, this is special. He, this, and I started to work with him and I got stronger at my abilities and to, but then I also got tested a lot more with a lot more darkness. Mm. 
so exactly yes that happens yeah um, so like your yeah. shop like my our shop was like that too it's just a magnet for both right we saw such dark and such light all in mm -hmm. one place and it's like very taxing to to um you know to navigate because uh it, it's not always so obvious people think that if we're doing this work that we're just always walking in sunshine and every nothing sticks to us but it takes a lot of clearing anything can activate something in you and and um you know stuff that was happening i didn't i wasn't even aware of i was just so tired yes yeah um, but yeah yeah and, and yeah we had a lot of people who were having mental health issues come into the store too because they're they're looking you know uh, they're looking for something to uh, alleviate or some magic answer sometimes or we're at like one guy said to me he was a crisis counselor a uh, social worker in the system you know and he said to me, you probably see more people than we do because you don't have the power to put them on medication or hospitalize them or mm, so sure. they're gonna yeah. they're gonna come to a spiritual store mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're safer. Yeah, and, absolutely. But then we're thrust into this position of being social workers or psychiatrists and we're not. So it's very tricky. I didn't you find like gosh, yes. I mean, I think I did about 10,000 readings um, in 10 years, in a, in a decade, over 10,000 readings. Yeah. And after, you know, a childhood of, of being uh, constantly bombarded and then kind of being like, oh, well, that's who I've grown into. This is what I'm an expert at is being bombarded. Ah. Bombard me. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> and, uh, at least then I'll get paid for it I guess you know yeah. it was just like yeah then it got to a place where it was like oh my god like I have to learn to take care of myself and actually there was a time in my life where I didn't have to tune into anything for the mm. first time I was 36 and I and uh, I had I didn't need to be there for anyone or tune into anything for the first time in my life and it was such a shock it was like yeah. the whole 36 years of bombardment went Boof. and then it was like oh my god and from there you know I went into the self-love and from there that's where the foundation of uh, the 10 symptoms of outuition which is about you're you know using your intuition as you said earlier actually tuning into others and people pleasing and all of yeah. that and then you wonder why being intuitive is not working for you in terms of communication or relationships or the choices that you're making in your life being successful in whatever way you might class as successful yeah. it's because you're actually being outuitive rather than intuitive and it's about how to reverse all of that. Um, and I would say that the psychic stuff has really pretty much stopped, you know, and actually I never would have wanted that for myself. I found it exciting. It's a bit like a toxic relationship. Yeah, it can yeah. be addictive. Yeah. Um, but I've learned how to actually be at peace and that actually being at peace is... Um, a much better place you know even though it might seem boring or <laughs> I think there can be an addictive part there can be like a you know it's like a really exciting relationship but it's ultimately destroying so yeah. you know it's about how to actually choose the um the self-respect or self-love path which I think is what we've come down to today um there's been some lovely comments but i think we need to kind of wrap it up we've been going for over an hour yeah. um so, yeah i'm just That's checking great. now yeah it's been fab to have this well i have yeah. to say you know you know in light of what we're living through right now with the the lockdown quarantines the corona all of this i have to say without being Pollyanna about it, because there's obviously lots of suffering. Um, 
Mm. It's also been an enormous gift in this pause, you know, um, right. Because as, as intuitive as, as I might be, I still am amazed how long it took me to fully calm down all of this adrenaline from living, you know, it's mm -hmm. yes, it's all exciting, but everybody's been just sort of spinning up or bigger, bigger, more, more, more for years. And, and all of a sudden it's like, slam, <laughs> stay home, cook, think, process. And it's been like a great gift for that to, to get centered. And, and then you start to hear an even deeper intuition that's going on inside, right? Mm. Mm. Like there's always so many layers to it. And I think that would be my parting words, I guess, is to try to look at the, the gift in this pause and trust we're all going through something inner and everything's going to look different, but doesn't mean it's bad or worse. Mm. It's not going to be worse. Yeah, I think, you know, um, there was some kind of survey done that was like uh, only, I don't know if it was just Brits, I think it might have been, but it was like people were just not ready for lockdown to be over. Nobody really wanted it to go to be over yet. Right. So to be honest, I think we're all feeling this as you know I mean actually it's getting a bit same same and a bit kind of like variety is the spice of life and we miss our friends and we miss our family yeah. but you know at the same time it's like it's reminding us how important it is for us to make time for those that we love and to make time for ourselves yeah uh, which I think is just profound yes um, so yeah, yeah this yes. gift of lockdown as you say, um, I think that's a really beautiful way to end today. And so yeah, thank you very much for being My here. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Too. We can do this again. This is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been lovely to get to know you better, Catherine. And, uh, yeah. you know, you've really got some gems going on there. And so, you know, you, your book, I'm sure, is amazing to read. Um, I really love what yes. you were saying about you know, the the light and the self-esteem. And again, we're just really talking each other's language. Yeah. So we look forward to the next time that life brings us together. And thank you, everyone, for yeah, being definitely. here. The thank links you. are in the post. If you want Catherine's book or you want to check out my course that starts on Monday. Okay. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Take care, Catherine. You too. Bye. 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 <laughs>